Hello and welcome to Shep Rambles, where I am Shep and I tend to ramble about what? Anything and everything. And what are we going to ramble about today? Well, how about the stock market? That's an interesting subject to talk about, especially uh, this year in the year of 2018 of uh, volatility where you never know where it's going to go. And 2017, it was relatively easy. It was pretty much going up. 2018, in January, it went up, and then it just went all over the place after that. But, um, yeah. So, here we are. Now, just to get some things clear, I am not a professional trader. I have done some trading. Um, I have made money, and I've lost money. Um, right now I have pulled, I, well, I pulled myself out for a few months out of the market because it's been getting really stupid. Um, it's like everything will be fine and then President Trump makes a tweet and then all of a sudden the market goes to hell and that keeps happening. Um, and it, it's, it's really frustrating. It's you know, it's frustrating when you seem to be getting some momentum going in the direction that you want it to go, and then uh, the president makes a tweet, and you're like, really? Did you have to do that? And it screws everything up. You know, and then there's this whole trade war thing. Um, it's, oh man, it's just annoying to no end. Um especially if you're trying to invest or you're trying to make a little bit of extra money on the uh, stock market. Uh, it sucks. It does. Now, what I wanted to talk about uh, is in regards to what is the market going to do? Is it going to climb or are we going to see a recession? Um, the news that I'm seeing Kind of reminds me of Star Wars, actually, <laughs> because uh, it's always mixed news. I always see news stating, oh, we still got a little bit more room to go in the bull market, uh, which has been going on since uh, Obama took office. And then there are others saying a recession is coming, but, it, you know, it may not be right around the corner, but it's coming. And, you know, and some are saying that it's coming really, really quickly. So that's kind of what I wanted to get over. Because um, here's the thing. Um, there are two different ways uh, to basically trade. And one of them is using fundamentals. Um, basically, how well is the company doing? Um, uh, their, their performance, basically. How, how were their how were their sales uh, and, and stuff like their uh, quarterly report um, the other one is technicals um, that's all the stuff like you know like this stuff here um, where where you're comparing it's my cat I'm wondering what he's doing um, you're comparing moving averages and using different uh, charts and, and graphs and stuff like that. Well, fundamentals are good, um, but I look at technicals. Um, and let me tell you why I look at technicals. A lot of the trading nowadays, um, and I've looked into this, they say, 70% or more of the trading that's going on these days is high speed trading. Um, is, is it high speed trading or, or high high volume or what? I forget the exact terminology of it. Basically, it's run by computers rather than humans. All right. It's not like the old days, like the movie Trading Spaces. 
spaces. Places, sorry. Spaces was that thing where they're changing houses and stuff like that. No, Trading Places with Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy. A classic, right? Classic movie. Um, where they're on the trading floor and they had all the, the slips and they're all like, uh, buy, buy, sell, sell, right? They're, you know, that where people are actually, you know, controlling the market. Well, it's not like that anymore. Now, now it's computers. Um, and you've got people, and you can look this up, look this up on, on YouTube, do some Google searching. Um, it's, uh, let me see here. Let me see if I can get, figure out exactly what it's called here. High speed trading. Ah, high frequency trading. That's what it's called. HFT. So let me give you the kind of the definition of it. High frequency trading is a type of algorithmic trading character characterized by high speeds, high turnover rates, and high order to trade ratios that leverages high frequency financial data and electronic trading tools. All right, so what that means is that there are computer programmers that, and, and they, these guys are like mathematicians and they're like really, really super smart. They write these computer algorithms, very complicated algorithms that these programs are like, constantly run where they scan the whole market quickly looking at a variety of different things as far as moving averages you know where does the 50-day moving average or the 20-day moving average compare to the 50 or the 100 or the 200 um, you know where's the support and the resistance line uh, it searches for keywords in the news, all, all kinds of stuff. Um, it'll compare uh, certain sectors together and stuff like that. And then those programs react very quickly. If you look on, if you look on YouTube and look under high frequency trading, there'll be a video, you'll see one. Um, where at the start of the day, I literally, like if within one minute, they have, what, got like over almost, I don't know, 100,000, 100, a million orders or something like that. It's something nuts. It is like super, super quick. So these, these computer algorithms and, and, and there are more than, than one company that are running these algorithms. And so they're all trying to outdo each other. So they're trying to buy high volume worth of stocks and then selling it just as quickly, trying to get the best price and everything like that. And it's so quick that a regular person can't keep up with it. So if you've ever watched the market and and you see something happening and it's like doing this like really really quickly and you're like ooh I need to get on that and you're like how come how come I couldn't get on it when it was down there well you know what is driving all that and like and you're thinking well how do those people know to get into it well those aren't people that's the computer doing that those are all the computers and the algorithms doing that stuff you know and and all the people that are jumping in are jumping in somewhere in the middle, you know, or maybe towards the top when 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 it starts leveling out is, is by the time people start getting into it. But yeah, when you when you like during the day, when you see this, that's all the computers jumping in and buying. And then when you see this, that's the computer selling. 
is that you'll see this and then other people will start panic them real people start panicking they start selling they start selling and then all of a sudden boom it goes right back up and you're wondering um okay how did the people down here know to start buying you know you, you see you see it where it goes down and it goes up and it goes down it goes up goes down and then all of a sudden boom you know it's it just starts going it's like well how come it didn't do here or here or here how come all of a sudden it's here how did all these people get it right well it's because they're not people it's all algorithms it's all computers and it's all happening so quickly that people can't keep up with it and so my point um, is that these computers I'm sure the fundamentals are, are, are programmed in there as it is, but for the most part, computers are just technical things. And so in my opinion, now I've not written these algorithms and I'm not a mathematician, so what do I know? But just from observation, uh, and that's something I'm gonna show you a little bit more closer in detail here. Um, I believe that these computers and algorithms are looking more on the technicals than the fundamentals um, because it's a computer program. So in other words, when X meets Y and equals A and B, but not C, do this. All right, that's a technical thing. Um, and there's no emotion whatsoever. So the algorithm will hit to a certain point and it does what it, it does what it does. There's no emotion in there, there's no thought. It's you know, when you see all when you see all this selling here and then all of a sudden it starts boom going right back up. And it's not people that are like, "Ooh, this is a great time to buy." The the ones where it goes up a little and then down and up a little and then down all those little tiny little ups, yeah, those are the people right there that are buying in. It's just not enough to bring it up. It's those computers that make it jack right up. That's what. And I am, yeah, maybe I'm wrong, you know, but from observation, that's what I've been seeing. And I've been trying to figure that out for months. And then when I started learning more about high frequency trading, it started to make more sense to me. Now, the thing that I wanted to talk about in this video is that, um, you know, they're saying, uh, oh, there's a little bit more room left in the market. No, there's a recession coming, blah, blah, blah. They don't know, neither one of them knows what's going to happen. Well, I think a recession is coming. And I'll, I'll give you a closer look on why I'm saying that because I'm looking at the technicals um, I'm looking at the Dow Jones I'm looking at the S&P and I'm looking at the 100 and the 200 day moving averages and from what I can see the one that the 200 day moving average is doing this all right it's going up what you think oh well that's good right well the problem I'm gonna put my hand like this the problem is the 100-day average is doing this. When the 100-day average crosses over, or crosses under, sorry, when it crosses under, usually that's a signal, that's a sell signal. And if you uh, assume that computers are programmed to sell based on those signals, what do you think is gonna happen when it crosses over? Um, yeah, it could dip like crazy. Um, it could go down like this, hit it, and bounce right back up. I'll show you some examples of real data, okay? So that way you can see what I'm talking about and see what the possibilities are. I just wanted to do a video on this um, just to get everyone prepared of what could be happening down the road. Do I think now is a good time to buy stocks? No. I think we're kind of topped out in the market. Um, January of 2018, I think, was the peak. And we haven't been able to get back up to that peak. It's been a struggle. 
and with everything happening in the news right now, um, I just I don't see us going back up there. And this bull market's been going on for what nine years now. Um, we're due for a recession, and recession is not a bad thing. Okay, there there needs to be a healthy pullback in the market. Um, because it is it is really overbought right now, and um, that's why I don't think it's a good time to buy stock. Because when you buy stock, you want to be able to hold on to it. You want to invest in a company. Well, this is the peak, right? And you want to buy a hundred shares of a company because you want to invest in them for the long term. Why would you want to buy stock here? You know, if you want to invest in a company, you know, for the next 30 years, why would you want to buy it here? For all you know, you know, it may take another 10 or 15 years before it even goes up past this line. I mean, there's, you know there's going to be a recession. Maybe it goes over this line and, and then goes down. But it's going to happen. It has to happen. And that's just the... the um, that's just how the uh, market works. That's just how the, uh, what do you want to call it, the, how the economy should be working. So typically you want to wait until the stocks that you want to get are a lot more affordable. And so you want to get them down here. Now maybe you might want to say, okay, well, maybe I'll get a couple shares, you know, up here or something like that. You know, and then when it drops, you know, start getting some others, and and yeah, and some people do that, but but as far yeah, I just I don't think it's a good idea. If you do decide to have shares that are up here, or maybe you recently got them, depending upon how much you got, you might want to think about getting a put option to help protect as a form of insurance because of the if the market drops and it drops hard. And you start losing value on those stocks at least if you have a put option you can protect your investment and that way if you um, you can either sell that put um, and use the money from that to offset what you lost or let's say you had a hundred shares in XYZ company um, and you bought that put option at a certain dollar price well then you know if if the drop if the stock falls then what you could do is simply um, exercise your 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 put option to sell your hundred shares of stock at that um, at that put option uh, price that you that strike price you know, and then just, you know, and, and get out of it. So, um, you always want to have a backup plan so you don't get burned, you know, otherwise you may be just hanging on to that stock for a while before it gets back up in value. I've got five shares in one company and I should have taken the opportunity to sell it when I did and I didn't. And it went from being, uh, like an $80 profit to now a negative $80 thing. And, I don't know how long I've got to wait before it goes back up to that point again. But it's only five shares, so. But still, I mean, it's it's the it's it's a little unnerving because if I had sold it, I could have bought you know more stock when I got lower. But um, let's go ahead and let's take a closer look at uh, these charts and let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, now, like I said, I'm not a pro, I'm not a professional, um, I'm not going to pretend that I've been doing this for years and years and years, and I'm like the best that there is, because um, I'm not. Um, I do a lot of practicing, but, and so if there are a lot of you traders out there that are very successful, um, hey, maybe you can teach me a thing or two. If you're seeing something that I'm talking about that you're like, no, dude, man, you are like totally wrong. Hey, man, that's what the comments are for down below. All right. Let me know. 
I mean, set, set me straight. I'm good. I'm good for that. All right. I'll, I'll admit when I'm wrong. I ain't got a problem with that. But let's take a look at this and let me show you what I think, what I'm seeing. And um, then we'll go from there. Okay, so here we are. Uh, here is the S&P. Now, quite specifically, uh, this is looking at the ETF. Uh, from what I've looked at, the ETFs are generally the same so, um, as like the regular S&P. So uh, that's what I'm going to go by because when I trade, I trade mainly um, options. So this is where we're at right now in June 2018. Now you can see here, here's the beginning of 2018, how it just, it, there was this insane, it went up really steep. And then if you've been following the market, you know that it just dropped like nuts, went back up, dropped, went, nah, nah. a lot of this was because of the whole trade issue and stuff. And it's been trying to recover. Uh, and it's hit this resistance right here. You see that? And it's uh, been falling back down again. So it's it's having a hard time trying to get back up to this point. Now granted, this peak is right where it was earlier this year, around January 16th. So, I mean, so far, I mean, the market's not really doing too bad I mean at, it's sitting right now about where it was at the beginning of the year um, but it's been all over the place I mean would I say buy stock now uh, I don't think it's a good idea me personally um, but I want to show you what I'm talking about in regards to technicals okay so this yellow line right here this is my tw I'm looking at a, a yearly is this a yearly chart or a daily chart? Well, this is actually, it's called a daily chart, but if I were to scroll this out, all right, this is like many, many, many years. So you can see that down towards the bottom down here. So I mean, for me, I just considered a yearly chart, but anyway, um, this here is the 20 day moving average. Okay, so that means like every it's taking every 20 days, moving every 20 days and making an average so that we can kind of get a general idea of what it's doing. And then this uh, teal line here is a 100 day moving average. And then this red line here is the 200 day moving average. Now usually you want this 20 day or some people go by a 50 day um, you want this 20 day moving average to be above your 100 day um, and it crossed and fell underneath here in this this area but it managed to climb back out so I mean this is good but take a look at this 100 day and this 200 day they are getting close to meeting and you may be thinking well I mean the markets going up why does that matter well if it continues to do this down up and down movement and stuff like that I mean here it's going up here right but yet this thing is still curving downwards because of the overall uh, average over 100 days um, and computers, the, all they're going to see is what they're programmed to see. They're going to see, like, if they're programmed to say, oh, when the 100-day moving averages cross, uh, crosses under the 200-day, start selling. You know, and now this, uh, granted, this is the S&P, but they may be using this as a trigger to sell various things within the S&P uh, market. Um, and the same thing with uh, Dow Jones, which the ETF on that is DIA. So here we go. This is what Dow Jones looks like. So it's it's similar, right? But 
you can see the 100 and the 200 days are converging and they are getting close this is why I'm saying I think a recession is coming um, let me go back to well let's let's use the Dow Jones for for a moment let's let's go back all right we're gonna go back to 2017 all right so you're seeing all of 2017 at the moment except for the fact that my head is covering some of it but do you see this space here so the 100 day is has got some space uh, from the 200 day and you can see two, 2017 was a very nice steady increase okay if you had bought stock or options you know for the most part you were doing pretty well you were doing okay now let's let's uh, move this and we're gonna take this in between 2016 and 2017 well we'll do 2015 and 2017 okay so now take a look at this here is 2015 right here now if you take a look um, right here do you see how the first of all the 20 day moving average crossed I've got some uh, hold on here I got some graphics and stuff here okay so the 50 day crossed under the 100 day right here okay and what happened when this happened well it started to sell you can see that um, if you look closer at this uh, at the market down here um, we can zoom into it but I, I want to stay where we can see all this you can see it kind of bounced up bounced up um, eventually went over that uh, and then but even though it went over that you can see that the uh, 20 day was still underneath the 100 day and then the 20 day crossed under the 200 day and what happened it started to really really drop and I'm making circles. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> what happened? Started making circles. That's what happened. All right, hold on here. Exit draw mode. And remember when I was talking about how computers, um, it's like when they buy, they buy very quickly, or when they sell, they sell very quickly. Uh, like the the cells, they call those flash crashes. And this is a flash crash right here. This 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 huge drop and that's exactly what happened uh, in 2018 also that was uh, a flash crash so there's this and then right at this point the computers are like oh time to start buying everything and then it bounced up and down and blah, 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 blah. but you can see these technicals you look at them and From what I can see, they're they're nearly accurate. I mean, you, you got to think like a computer. I think you, you have to outthink the computer. Um, and if you look here, right at this this point here, the 100 day now crosses under the 200. So what happens around this period? Well, now let's go ahead and just zoom in here. okay so we're about here now and it continues to re remain underneath here so it's a little tricky because you you get this signal here um, maybe you had stock down here um, people did sell but they also bought but then they sold again and then this came back up the 20 day came back up but but since the 100 was still under the 200 it's like it was not it was still like not ready to return back to its bull state yet again because what happened it fell right back down again 
um, and then it tried to, to climb up and it did it went back over the 100 and the 200 it was doing fine but once the 100 crossed over the 200 then it was pretty much smooth sailing it started you know okay it went down here yeah you're gonna have that happen but in the long run it, it was going up so let's keep going back here here's a couple more dips right but overall I mean if you're doing short-term trading um, these moving averages may not work too well for you um, so this is more like long-term trading but you can see that oh, okay if you had bought stock like yeah, around this area and you can see the 100 and the 200 are, are nicely spaced apart even though these dips happened especially like if you bought stock here and then it dipped down to here you really wouldn't have too much to worry about because as you can see the 20 day it came right down here to the 200 and bounced right up again computers computers are, are programmed to, to see this stuff and it comes right back up and and sure enough you know you it the it's it's worth it's worth fine and you know it kept going up and of course it dropped pretty far again um but if you were if you had bought stock down here and you started to see that ooh that 100 and that 200 they are getting kind of close you know maybe around here is a good time to sell then uh yeah that probably would be a very good decision then you can rebuy your stock when it was down down here you know or you could hold on to that stock because it would have continued going up but um i don't know i think it'd be good to sell here and then and then uh take your 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 uh, investment and your profit and then just rebuy because you'd be able to get more by buying down here uh, anyway let's keep looking back here okay so we're gonna go back we'll go back and back see the 100 is still over the 200 we still got dips and stuff but now now we're now we're getting into some interesting stuff here so here's a big dip all right this dip here is in 2011 we had a very nice increase here um, and you can see the 20 day uh, moving average it looks like this one fell I mean it, it had already fallen before it was kinda too late but this should have been a telltale sign that something was going to happen right because it bounced back up and then it hit here so this is kind of like uh, you know you've been warned once you know here it is a second time so if you didn't sell here, it's like, oh, well, it dropped as far, you know, and here it is again. So, I mean, I don't know if you see see where, where I'm getting at here. We'll, we'll, we'll keep going down a little bit more. Okay, this was... What, this was the recession here in 2008. It went from 2008 till 2009 so it was about about a year so look what happened here here's the 100 here's the 200 they got closer and closer and closer together and I mean look at it it's doing exactly what it's doing right now is exactly what it did back then the 200 was going up which you think oh that must be a good thing but what was the 100 doing it was going down and they're getting close and close and close and converging and converging and converging until finally it crosses and then what happens well then you know well first of all it starts to dip you know you look at this 20 day it dips and it climbs you know but you start seeing it the the gap widen 
you know it did manage to come up here and hit the two go up to the 200 again but it hit it and bounced back down 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 until the market just went so, yeah, and fell and you know fell some more but during this whole time uh this was a whole bear market and even though it was picking up here this is not a sign as far as i'm aware this would not be a sign of a bull market or a safe one at that it didn't really happen until the 100 or yeah until the 100 crossed over the 200 and it was looking you know pretty steady that was your bull market right here and uh Obama, he was elected in, what was it, 2008? So, uh, at least from what I understand, uh, the market didn't fall because he was elected. Like, his policies, usually, usually a president's policies don't go into place until, like, the year after they're elected, something like that. So, this here was actually... A result from President Bush I could be wrong I'm just going based off of what I've been told but this whole bull market this healthy bull market that we've been having is all because of President Obama um, and now that we're in the second year of President Trump now a lot of his stuff has taken effect and look what's happening now i'm not trying to bang on trump or anything like that okay um uh and i don't want to get into politics and all that other stuff but uh there's obviously this here this drop here was was bound to happen but all the rest of this crap is all the stuff that's been happening in the news. So, but look, like what I was saying, look at this. And this is a very, very steep curve. I mean, these are getting close. I mean, I would say the way these are going, I mean, we're getting close to the end of June here. Maybe by the end of August into, Sept into September, the 100 may cross under the 200. Now it may, it may hit the 200 and bounce right back up. It may cross under and maybe do this, or it may cross under and keep going down. So do I think it's a good time to really buy stock right now? I don't think so. I mean, I wouldn't, I personally would not. Um, I would not be short selling either. Um, me personally, I, I would stay away from short selling. That's just, that's a recipe for disaster if you ask me. You're better off buying put options, I think, because you, you're not, I don't know. Selling to open is, oh man, that that's, when you are, when you are taking a, a risk of, uh, unlimited losses versus unlimited gains. You must be a high roller or something, but I would rather buy rather than sell to open. So, um, yeah, so those are my thoughts, um, in regards to the market. And, uh, what I kind of wanted to show there is there's a part here okay yeah it's right in this area here I'll take a look at this here <clears throat> you can see uh, this was 2004 around 2006 um, you can see how the 100 it did cross under the 200 and it was kind of going up, 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 and down, but it didn't, it didn't go down 
uh, too far and it crossed back up and then it went back down and it kind of rode that line a little bit and then it went back up. So it could do the same thing this year. You know, it what we're seeing in 2018 could do the same thing as it, it did in 2004, you know, or we could see something like what happened around 2001. Of course, this year, what was it, September 11th, 2001, that was the terrorist attack. So, well, we know what happened there. That didn't help. Um, and we can see that it went up, but, you know, it was already going down by this point. But you can see that when it crossed, if you're seeing this and then you see this, mm, probably a sign to maybe sell what you have if you have a profit um, before you start losing it. Because, yeah it wasn't really safe to really buy anything again until maybe after it went back up here. You know, and uh, it was kind of flat, it looks like, pretty much here until it started going back up again. But those are the technicals that I see. Um... What are your thoughts on on the whole situation? Um, I'd be interested. I mean, do you think these are just false signals that that are showing? Um, do you think the hundred's just going to hit the two hundred and just bounce right, bounce bounce off of it like it's nothing, or do you think we're due for a recession, and this is just a sign that you know that's going to happen? I figure I. I think it's going to happen unless, you know, everyone holds hands, sings Kumbaya, and we have world peace. <laughs> um, if that happens, then, yeah, I think the stock market will go up and, and the 100 won't touch the 200. Um, but with the way things are going in the news, I I don't know. I, 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 I see the recession happening. Maybe it'll be a short one, you know. Will it last a year or a year and a half? May, no, maybe, maybe, I don't know. But I think something's coming, to be honest. But let me know what you think. I'm curious. I'm curious what you think. Um, and other than that, I've got uh, other videos. They're right over here, so uh, check them out. Um, always looking for uh, feedback and comments and uh, loving to speak with you, so... Um, other than that, uh, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.